So you start off with the 3945 star, uh, which was simply a one to denote that you had served virtually throughout the war. Uh, but then the next two are my favourites. One is the Africa Star with an 8th Army clasp. That's the key part. I mean, Napigils in Cairo got an Africa Star, but with the clasp you're raised up. It's rather like the Americans have uh, had uh, a, 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 a rifle badge here to show they'd been in action. So the clasp shows you'd been in action. 8th uh, Army and the 1st Army was the other one. Then the next one, of course, is the Italy Star, with no kind of embellishment at all. It's just, I was in Italy. It's annoying because you could have somebody who'd spent his entire war in Sicily, having a lovely time swimming on the beach, and me up in three feet of mud in the Power Valley, you know. It still, it doesn't matter. It's, it's only a, a, a niggle. Um, what have I got next? Oh, the Defence Medal or War Medal. Well, the Defence Medal showed that I served something here in England, like the Whitehall Defence is thing. Uh, obviously, there are people in the hospital now who have nothing else. They, they, they weren't anywhere in the war apart from here. And the, the next, we call it the War Medal, but it was a victory medal, that's all. I mean, <laughs> if you're alive, you probably had you were a victory. Um, and the next one is the General Service Medal. Now, a General Service Medal is given for overseas service in any sort of theatre other than that for which you have a campaign medal. And to identify it, you have clasps on it. So if you're in Malaya, Palestine, Kenya, you have an appropriate thing. Mine has Palestine on it, which is what I went to in the end of 45, rather than go to, Ger to Japan. And the last one is great fun. It's the Queen's Coronation Medal. Now, when that happened, I was running our record office. We only had, unlike previous um, uh, coronations and funerals, where they were given out literally with the rations, we only had 50. But I got one, because I distributed them. <laughs> so th those are they. Just a sec. Um, it, it, I don't wish to be to say I should have had another medal or anything, but when I said to you about humour, one of my with a platoon you have three lance sergeants. That's you're a full sergeant as a platoon leader. You have three lance sergeants, and one of my one of mine was a great. An inseparable pal of mine. His name was Alfred Moore, but he was always known as Pony, for no reason I had no idea. Well, I'd, in a, again up in Camino, I'd lost my platoon officer, he'd been wounded, so I had the platoon to look after. And we'd lost half a dozen chaps anyway. I'm frozen stiff, fed up, worried, what's going to happen to the boys, how are we going to do? And we were getting harassed by a Spando, now that's the German mach light machine gun that fires 16 rounds a second. Vroom, vroom, frightening. We're getting harassed by this thing from over there. Come on, Pony, I said, we're going to knock this damn thing out. Oh, God, he says. <laughs> and off we went. On the way over, we got sniped at from over here. We saw the move. This is how close it was. They saw a movement, the sniper at it and we ducked down behind a rock. And my nerve went. Which is the worst possible thing to have happened. Oh, it was my responsibility. My nerve was gone. And Pony knew exactly what to do. He said, Mitch, I'm fed up with this. <laughs> I'm going over there and asking them to stop shooting at us. <gasps> well, of course, it broke the spell, and I was all right again. And he said, throw that out of buggy, and knocked the gun out. But there was no one to witness it. We'd have both had an MM. Never mind. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we did it. We knocked it out. <laughs> but can you imagine? <laughs> Arson to stop shot. <laughs> and it, it completely it broke the spell. You know. <laughs> and I was back to normal again. <laughs>